Hello friends, Tanya here with a video for Trinity Stamps. Today we're going to make five cards using the Summer Blooms Kit and the First Bloom Stamp and Die Set. Here they are together. They are made uh, from the same person, Paper Star, created both of these so they do coordinate together. We've got spring kind of theme and the summer theme. Both are just beautiful florals and greenery that you can use together. This pattern paper is from the Summer Blooms Kit. This is a heavy cardstock weight pattern paper that's double-sided. And I took this beautiful dot pattern, which is very pale, which, you know, you can do a lot of things with that. And maybe you really are going for a soft look. I tend to like more bold. But we're going to expand my repertoire and we're going to go with subtle. So I'm taking some of the small stamps from each of the stamp sets and I've decided I'm going to stamp the same image on each single color of dot in this juicy embossing ink from Ink on 3, which is in the Trinity Stamps shop. I love it. So the first one we did was a solid bloom in the red dots. And now we're doing the butterfly from first bloom in the darker yellow dots. And then in the light blue, we're doing the small five petal daisy like flower. And I have to tell you, it was hot in my craft room, like over 90 degrees. And that's really hot in Minnesota, especially. <laughs> So I also had a fan going and my embossing ink was drying pretty fast. So I had to pause my stamping partway through <clears throat> and put some embossing powder on. I'm doing clear embossing. You could do this in a multitude of different colors, depending on the look you're going for. But I thought we'd go with clear. And I'm a, uh, I did go heat set that. And I almost waited too long. The solid images... Um, we're starting to lose their stick. The embossing ink had already started to dry. Now I've got one of the greenery pieces and I'm stamping that in the green dots. And I have another greenery that I'm going to stamp in the yellow dots, the lighter yellow dots. And then we're going to take a larger bloom from First Blooms, I believe, and we're going to stamp those over the pink dots. This gives you a nice evenly spaced background. Now we have all of those images clear heat embossed on the polka dots. And since this is a nice heavyweight um, cover stock weight uh, pattern paper, it easily handles the embossing. Now I've taken some Copic markers and I'm gonna add some color to each of these stamped and embossed images. You can color over that with your Copics. And I'm kind of choosing uh, a coordinating color scheme. Here we've got some yellows that go from deep to light to color the different portions of the butterfly. And then for the greenery, I am, of course, using green. I'm not doing much shading. This image is large enough to actually benefit from a little shading. So we're using two different pinks here. I colored the entire petals with a lighter pink and then added some details with the Copic. Now I'm pulling out the A7 envelope builder because I want that scallop edge die and the modern embossed um, stack. Both of these are A7 sized or 5 by 7. I'm also going to take some of these summer blooms and the glass slipper and some, I think that was uh, Expecto Patronum was the name of it, but they don't carry, Trinity doesn't carry that one anymore. You could use the Twinkling Stars. It's a, a very close to the same. They're iridescent little different shapes of stars, and that's what um, that Expecto Patronum was. Now, we're going to make a full panel shaker card. You're going to see a lot of those in the future from me because I love them. They are super easy, and they're a great way to use all of those gorgeous embellishments that we've been hoarding. Not really, I myself don't like the bulk of a regular shaker card. So as much as I love shaker cards, I wasn't making very many of them. 
I'm going to make lots of them now. <laughs> so I've taken a piece of just clear acetate from a packaging and I have saved more than any person should save of those, but I'm going to use them up now. Um, and I cut it to about an inch wider than the um, cardstock that I'm wrapping. Used some uh, tape, double-sided tape, to adhere three sides. I took some of these summer blooms or summer sparkles rhinestones from the kit, and I made sure they were all face up on a piece on that extra piece of cardstock before I slid those in. Now I'm adding a little bit of the glass slipper sequins and that we'll call it the twinkling stars <laughs> sequin mix and we're going to add those inside we're just going to dump them in that's all you got to do just dump them in and we'll seal up the last side of the shaker you'll notice that I do trim the corners I make sure not to leave a little space that isn't trimmed before it's folded over and that's just to cut down on any bulk in the corners and there you go I just love to shake these. Oh my gosh, I love it. The rhinestones even slide around, so you can add rhinestones to your shakers too. Now we're going to add a sentiment to the front of this card, and we're going to pull out the scripty birthday sentiment. Um, and I'm going to use some of the same matte, uh, same some of the same pattern paper as I used for the scalloped matte for this card. Just going to use my Barely Art Precision Glue here. You can use whatever fine tip glue you have. And we're going to adhere the word to the bubble cut die, or die cut vellum piece, that's the bubble cut. Just going to put a heavy block on top of that to help that adhere well. Just going to do the same with birthday. The word birthday is actually in three pieces. We have every letter but B on one piece. We have the tittle for the eye, that's another piece, and the B is a separate piece. And I love the script of that sentiment. We've been neglecting the scripty sentiments. If you have them, awesome. If you don't have them, check them out. They're pretty fun. There's a whole bunch of them. And I bet every other release or so, we have more of them. Maybe every release. I don't remember if there's any coming up in the release that's going to premiere next week. Yes, so excited. Autumn is coming. All right, back to our summer. Our summer isn't over. We should still enjoy it, right? So I did put a little bit of dimension behind this panel. I put some coaster blanks back there. Coaster blanks are simply pulp board coasters that don't have any advertising or ink on them. And I buy those at a pretty low price and I haven't had to buy any in a long time because I buy a lot at once. You can use whatever dimensional aid you'd like. Here I am shaking the heck out of those shakers. I love them. The other fantastic part of this is you can glue right on top of that acetate window <clears throat> with just liquid glue. And it is super easy and it sticks pretty fast. Maybe it's the glue I'm using. I do love this glue. But I haven't, I've seen several people using this te technique and no one's using anything particularly special. Liquid glue, dry glue, doesn't matter. It all works. And I'm going to keep this one pretty simple now that we've created a custom patterned paper background and a shaker. We're just going to put those simple sentiment on. Now we're going to move on and create a mini slimline. This is the dainty scallop edge mini slimline that I cut from white cardstock and I'm adhering that to a three by six card base. This is a panel cut from the rest of that pattern paper that we modified using the mini slimline stitched stack and I'm adhering those together again with a little dis dimension. I think I used some scratch card scratch cardstock for those. I pulled out the A Sentiment for Almost Everything stamp set and I found a sentiment that I wanted to use. I don't, I, you know that I use a lot of birthday sentiments because that's what I need for my cards the most. And this one I thought we should make as a thank you card. Thank you cards don't have to be as huge as birthday cards for a, 
an office. So there you go. Um, this mini slimline stitched stack is amazing. It has so many dies that you can use for not only mini slim lines, but for so many of our sentiments. It is a gold mine of sentiment banner cutting outing. Is that even a sentence? Hmm. I, I am using the uh, oh, partial die cutting technique here to get this the length that I want it. And now I have this totally stitched edged sentiment to add to the bottom corner of the card. I actually think I like this pattern paper better on this little card than I do on the shaker card because it's embracing the simplicity, I think. I don't do clean and simple very well or very often, I should say. Um, I'm often tempted to just do more. You're going to see a lot of these summer sparkles embellishments. There's a lot in that little container. They do go a long way. I bet you I've, I've used them liberally on probably 10 cards already. Okay, now for this next card, we are going to use um, a larger bloom from each of the stamp sets. We've got one from the Summer Bloom and Blooms Kit and one from the First Bloom stamp set. I have a piece of cardstock that measures five by eight and a half inches. And we're going to create another A7 or 5x7 card. I've treated that panel with anti-static powder tool, which for me just happens to be an old sock with some cornstarch in it that I stitched shut. <laughs> and we're going to use the Juicy Ink again and going to stamp these flowers all over the panel. Oh goodness, I thought I sped, sped this portion up. I guess not. So you're seeing this in real time. Underneath that piece of cardstock, you're going to notice that that is a uh, insert for the Misty. Sometimes I want a little extra insurance that my images are going to stamp crystal clear. So I will use that pad to give me a little cushion. With wood mount stamps, they all had a built-in cushion in it, in them. Um, at least mine did. And the clear stamps don't. So sometimes in order to get a crisp image, you need something underneath your paper with a little bit of give. And if you have a misty, you have an instant pad for that. You can even lay your paper right in your misty and not use it as a stamp positioner, but to help get nice crisp images. Now I'm going to heat emboss this with um, white satin pearl embossing powder and <clears throat> I'm just sprinkling this on the paper over my coffee filter and I see some people use the uh, one coffee filter for one session and throw it away. I have been using the same two or three coffee filters for years now. That's how well they work without um, having any of the embossing powder cling to them. <clears throat> I went and heat set that quick with my heat gun, which, you know, you guys, I have to love you a lot if I'm using my heat gun when it's 95 degrees in my craft room. Just saying, <laughs> just saying. And we're going to do some ink blending over this embossing. So we're doing an emboss resist. And I'm using the Sweet Petunia Pink ink cube and the Marigold Orange ink cube. Those both came in the Summer Blooms kit. And I have actually made several ink blended cards with these ink spots. I have also, or ink cubes, I've also done a bunch of water coloring where I smushed the ink pads onto the stamping surface or onto a surface and use them to watercolor. So there's a lot of ink in these little cubes. It will go a long way. Now, if you have the ink refills for these colors, you can refill your little ink spots. And I like the ink spots or the ink cubes 
to take when I'm traveling or to let the grandkids use the inks because it's easier in their smaller hands for them to use. And they can have access to several colors in a small space because um, they tend to like to play on the floor at my at grandma's house. Um, and they um, are so very portable. I finished ink blending all of this and then I'm taking a dry cloth and wiping that over quickly to help brighten the embossing. And I'm going to take a damp cloth cloth also. These are hybrid inks so they're a little more likely to stain your embossing. Then I took a paintbrush with some clean water and spattered all over that background and I want a little shimmer in here too. So I have some liquid pixie dust that I've put in one of these little paint wells and added just a smidge just like a wet paintbrush amount of water to that to thin it out just a touch more and spattered that all over the background. And next I will use the modern embossed edge and there you can see because I used a heavyweight cardstock it even showed even better to cut that out with an A7 stack. Next I'm pulling out oh gosh you can see how many extra celebrates from the foil and cut or cut and foil uh, big celebrate I have. I will be making lots of cards with all of these sentiments. I just went hog wild a while back and made a bunch of them. Now I can just quickly pull them out of that um, packaging and adhere them to my cards. If you love to foil but you don't always want to take the time to foil while you're doing or you want to bring your foiled sentiments with you when you're traveling this is a great way to do it just do a bunch of them and keep them in the packaging so I just adhe simply adhered that to a five by seven card base with a little dimension behind it um, uh, both the main panel and the sentiment and I think that this packs enough punch all by itself with those two elements that all I'm going to do is add some more sparkly bits with the summer sparkles embellishment mix mix and I'd actually made this before I created two cards two slimline cards using the um I think that's the dainty scalloped edge slimline panels and I that sentiment was die cut with the um mini slimline stitch panels um I had also watercolored or no I stamped those okay let's go back to this this is the extra piece of the ink blended panel that we made for the a a7 or 5 by 7 card there were two clusters that were for the most part still visible on that panel so I die cut those and trimmed one of them just a smidge to put on the inside of the card here is a quick replay of all of the cards that I created and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the slimline cards that I made. I had stamped the images with the ink on three ink on watercolor paper, embossed them with clear embossing powder and then die cut them and layered those with the sentiment on the card front. This one was just simply foil and cut just like the A7 version. I only used two, nope, I only used images from the first, no, Summer Blooms kit for those two cards, but the rest of them were from the Summer, from both of the stamp sets. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit lengthy, but that's okay, right? If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now. If you're interested in any of the products I've used in this video, please check the description box below. And until next time, bye-bye.